Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta, and today we are going to discuss about measurement invariance of the composite model in Smart PLS. So when I talk about the property of invariance, it means that the the property of remaining unchanged regardless of changes in the conditions of measurement. For example, the area of surface remains unchanged if the surface is rotated in space. So why is it applicable in our in our uh, concept? It means that say for example we are having a model and we uh, divide the model into two parts or in two categories then will the path coefficient of these two models will change or not that we want to check basically after categorizing the matter model into two uh, into two parts does the results change or not that we want to check now the authors have recommended this procedure that is step one make sure that you uh, that the data preparation is done step two generate the data groups Step 1, you have to check the configural invariance. Step 2, compositional invariance is to be checked. Step 3, composite equality, that is full variance or partial variance that you have to check. Now, if we talk about the first part, that is a data preparation, uh, sufficient statistical power is necessary and the uh, sample sizes should be equal. So, for this purpose, uh, let us see the table which has been given by Cohen. According to this, first of all, find out how many arrows are going inside the particular construct. That is the maximum numbers of arrows pointing a construct. Say, for example, there are six arrows. We are working on the 5% level of significance and minimum R square, which we want to achieve is 0.5. Then the sample size uh, for six, the sample size is 48 samples are necessary. Make sure one thing that if you have uh, if you have divided, uh, if you have splitted the data into uh, into two parts, male and female, this 45 sample size should be more or less equal in male and female. Or, uh, or if if we are if we are dividing, if we are categorizing categorizing uh, the study into uh, public limited or the private limited banks, large scale or small scale, that way make sure that sample size more or less remains same. After this, you have to generate data groups for carrying out the multi-group analysis. That is, you will, you will have to divide the data, data set into two parts. Now, how we can carry, the, carry out this th particular thing in Smart PLS? Let us see. Let us go here. Make sure that you are in raw file, right? Not in the canvas. You are, I'll, I'll explain it again. If you are here, you will have to come here. Now you will have to split this data into two parts and for that purpose you will go in generate data groups and make sure that you are in gender and activate C1. Why C1? Because I know that, that C1 is the variable which is for gender. Two unique values, two unique values means one is male, another is a female. Click OK. The data will be split into two parts. Now when I hover my mouse here and when I click here edit window will activate now see uh, this zero is for female and one is for male i want to rename it so i'll go here edit and i'll say zero is for female click ok then i'll come here again and then i'll say one stands for male so we have configured the data groups two parts are there fine let's go back Now, we have to carry out the test for measurement in measurement invariance. We have to carry out the test for measurement invariance. What does that mean? We want to say that when we split the data, what is the definition? Let's understand. Measurement invariance or measurement equivalence is a me means of confirming that the measurement models specify the measures of the same attribute under different conditions. This is technical definition according to the Hensler. What does it mean? It means that when I divide the data into two parts, the characteristics of both these things should remain same. And for that purpose, they have specified that you should achieve configural invariance step in step one, compositional invariance in step two, and when you achieve one and two, you should go for comparing the composite's mean value and the variance of these two groups. If they three, all these three are achieved, we can say that 
full composite variance invariance is achieved okay the uh, the steps are when you achieve comp uh, configurable invariance yes go for second that is compositional invariance if you have achieved this then uh, if r e uh, means equal and variance is equal yes then we can say that the full measurement invariance is achieved if variances are equal and means are not equal then we will say that the partial measurement invariance is achieved in in this situation of configurable invariance not achieved no measurement invariance achieved and in second also no measurement invariance achieved it means that if you are not achieving invariance it means that it is necessary to report the separate results for male and female remember we are carrying out all this exercise to report our ultimate objective to reach here is is it necessary to report separate results for male and female or pooled results will work in our case is it necessary to report the separate model for public limited and private limited or after carrying out all this procedure our objective is that pooled result or one model will serve the purpose fine so that's the procedure now in step 3 the step 1 is in step 3 step 1 is to carry out the configurable invariance basically here what we want to say is that indicators on all the constructs should be same in both the groups you have split the data it means that say for example in loyalty in male there are four four statements similarly in female on loyalty there should be four statements same statements on same likert scale representing the construct the treatments which you are carrying out in both the groups for missing values extreme values coding reverse coding or handling the missing values should be same the algorithm which you are using for inner and outer measurement model structural and measurement model should remain same if all these things are done then only go for step 2 we don't have any formal testing for step 1 it's just the researcher who has to take the care he has to be very meticulous in this matter that are these things same or not if we have achieved this then we go for compositional invariance it means that we are comparing the correlation of two groups the idealistic situation is that this correlation should of both these groups should be nearer to 1 or the p value should be more than 0.05 if it is satisfied then we will say that the compositional invariance is achieved the null hypothesis in this case is compositional variance is achieved the alternative hypothesis is there is a lack of compositional variance the desirable is that the null gets accepted the guideline here is if both configurable invariance and compositional invariance are established then partial measurement invariance is confirm and researcher can proceed to compare the path coefficient with mga right you can compare the path coefficient with mga you can stop here also and you can say that we are going to represent male and female uh, results separately you can stop here also but if you want to say that no why there should be a separate model for male and female separate model for public limited and private limited i want only one model okay that is one size should fit everything or one model should fit all the categorical variables so for this purpose we go one step ahead and then we enter into step 3 here we are comparing the mean of both the groups variance of both the groups and then we say that is there difference so significant to report the separate results or not the procedure as suggested by the author is step 1 configurable invariance achieved yes go to step 2 compositional invariance achieved yes go to uh, step 3a equal variances are there yes go to step 3b equal means are there yes it means that full measurement invariance is achieved now if configurable invariance is not there in the first case only then you come directly that the composite does not exist in all the groups no measurement invariance and it means that no measurement invariance means the property of the model is changing in categories 
it means that it is necessary to carry out multi group analysis similarly in step 2 if we say that the compositional invariance is not there the composite is formed differently ac across the groups then also we can say that it is necessary that you carry out the multi group analysis right now one two achieved equal variances achieved or oh, sorry equal variance is not achieved it means that the partial measurement invariance is there and if this is also achieved then we go for equal means so let us see how we can carry out this thing in smart pls so for this purpose what we will do we will go in canvas calculate uh, permutation make sure you activate male here and you activate female here after this is done, it is necessary that you go in partial list square. Normally, path coefficient will be active. You must, you must make sure that factor is activated. Start the calculation. It will take some time. The results are ready. The path coefficients are displayed, but you have to go in my comp. Now here, idealistic scenario is that this should be equal to 1. The correlation is should be equal to 1. This we have already discussed. See the slide. This one. Compositional variance is achieved. This should be equal to 1. Null is R is equal to 1. So desirable is your P value should be more than 0 0.05. Let us see. Is it there? Yes, it is there. It is there. It is there. But there is one problem in coworker. Now, this is not equal to 1. The second check which you have to do is, let me take this screenshot so that you can understand this thing nicely. What is a desirable thing? The desirable is that, let me take this here, delete it, control V. If I write here 1, 1 stands for correlation. This is one. So the idealistic scenario is that one should be greater than original correlation, this one. And this should be greater than 5% confidence interval. If we achieve this, then we can say that we have achieved the compositional invariance. Step 2, we have achieved it. In case of problematic construct, which is there, 0 0.820, here the, the value is very much less than 1. Now what to do? So in such scenario, you will have to go in the outer loading. And in outer loading, you will have to find out that which is the statement whose p-value is less than 0 0.05. It means that it means that there is a significant difference in male and female path coefficient. So here AC3, p-value is less than 0 0.05 and it is very clear that there is a significant difference in the path coefficient of male and female. Let us expand this to get it clear. This is male and this is female. And see the path coefficient. They are significantly different. It means that if my com is red, on particular construct if my com is read on particular construct in step 2 and in outer loading one of the statement related to that construct is green it is a high time that we delete this to achieve compositional invariance I hope it's clear let's proceed further now Now, as step 1 and step 2 are established, we can say partial measurement invariance is confirmed and we can proceed for multi-group analysis. If you stop here, there is no problem. If you stop at the step 2, there is no problem. We will, report the, uh, we will report the separate result for male and female, nothing to worry. There is no, uh, it is not necessary for you to go on step 3, step 3 is not mandatory. We are only carrying out step 3 to establish that will the pool model work or not, pool results will work or not. So that's the reason we go in step 3. Now here 
you will get the results for mean and variance as we have discussed for step 3 that we are comparing mean and variance. Now what is a desirable thing? Let's understand. The desirable is that this mean value should be between 2.5% and 97.5%. If it lies between this range then the permutation values will be green which is desirable. See this is green. The software on its own will activate that this is satisfying the condition. It means that if this satisfies the condition, it is not necessary for you to report separate result for organizational commitment and job satisfaction because means of male and female are equal here. I will take this result in Excel format to make the things more clear. To make the things more clear, I will copy this in Excel format and I will take it, I will have a screen, so I will take it in C2, Control V. I will expand this and I will expand this also. Now I will cut this. And I'll insert this here. Insert cut cells. I'll cut this and I'll insert the I'll insert the uh, I'll cut this and I'll insert the cut cells. Now what is a desirable thing? Just see carefully that this value should be less than this this value this value should be less than this this value right and this value should be less than this value if it is satisfied on its own the software will turn the constructs into green and if it does not satisfy they are red. Similarly variances are also compared same way 2.5 percentage 97.5 percentage this value should be between 92.5 and 97.5. So it means that those constructs which are turned green we don't require to report separate result for two groups but those constructs which are having red value we have not achieved full measurement in variance in this we cannot we cannot have a pooled results in this case and it is necessary that for this construct we report separate results so it means that when means and variances of two groups are equal you have achieved full measurement in in variance so it is not necessary to report results of male and female separately. The results can be reported as a pool data. Fine. So thank you all of you. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.